William Nylander's eight-year contract extension is officially official from the Toronto Maple Leafs. I want to talk about it because I've thought about it a lot over the last 48 hours. I made my video over the weekend based on the report, and the report is true. $11.5 million per over an eight-year term, $92 million with, per Frank Cervelli, $69 million of it uh, going to signing bonuses. And that's, that's pretty crazy, but, I mean, we've seen that before. I, I do think, and I, I want to talk about this, because... The precedent here is poor. I think you could be happy Nylander signing long-term. If you're a Leaf fan, you could be happy. He's, he's staying eight years, nine years total if you're including this year. And at the end of the day, he's a great player. He's one of the best wingers in the game right now. Uh, he's only 27. So yeah, this brings him to 36 years old. But you would have to think he's still going to have lots of longevity through his 30s. So 36, it's not horrible. There's a lot of contracts that when you sign long-term, I mean, look at some of these contracts like Huberto, Johnny Gaudreau, they're taking it to like late 30s, like 40. So 36, when the contract ends, it's not horrible. But I will say this, when you're talking about the core four and all these things, wanting to stay in Toronto, like trying to win, I mean, Shanahan's quote from a few years ago that comparing to the Red Wings teams he was part of, like guys taking less, like this is nothing close to that, Right. Like, Nylander got the highest of high on this deal. He got higher than his buddy Pasternak. He got higher than a lot of wingers in this league. He's now in going into the next season. He's top seven in terms of salary. So, I mean, there was no discount here whatsoever. Yeah, you can say he committed eight years, unlike a guy like Matthews, but 11.5 is, is, is a heavy number. So that bugs me. And also the full new, no movement clause bugs me. I mean, for eight years, no movement clause, I feel, and this is my opinion, that if you are putting a no movement clause and you've seen this with the St. Louis Blues, look at the Blues roster and cap. Like Tory Krug was going to be a Philadelphia flyer, if not for a no movement clause, giving out no movement clause, like it's free candy is insane to me. And it should not be, it should not be a precedent set. It should not be a regular thing. If you're given a no movement clause, a clause to a guy across the contract like across the board all eight years there should be money taken off the board so the fact that he got like the higher end 11.5 he's now going to be top seven in the salary uh, in the league and he got a no movement clause across the board i feel like this guy got everything he wanted like i understand the leafs were limited on leverage because of the deal and because of like the year he's had so far but that part is tough for me to stomach, but I can be positive. I know people are in the cost be like, oh, why are you complaining, man? Great contract for a great player. I also know people are going to comment, ripping Shanahan, ripping the organization. We're going to get both sides of the comments. And, and I do think it's a problem here, but I'm on both sides here, guys. I, I am pissed with a couple things here, just in terms of the precedent that's been set. And now Mitchie Marner, he's going to come out wanting 12 plus million. But um, right now, I don't think he can make the case. I mean, Nylander, at least in recent memory, bigger in big playoff games. Last couple of years, his point production has been higher than Marner's. So at the end of the day, hopefully Marner signs around the same. And I and go check out my video on John Tavares. I really think if John Tavares' cap hit can at least be cut in half, so like a three-year deal at $6 million or like a four or five-year deal at like three or $4 million, if Tavares can take a huge hometown discount to finish his career in Toronto – till the end of his career and just win. I mean, take a discount, get a statue, buddy, and, and, and win. But I will say, if Tavares, once next year might be a little iffy, but after Tavares signs his new contract, if he can cut it at least in a half, you're talking about, let's say, $6 million. Then Nylander and Marner, we'll just say for the sake of argument, sake of math, they're both at, I don't know, $24 million combined. I, I really hope Marner's not at 12.5 per, but for the sake of argument, we'll say $24 million combined to Marner and Nylander. The 13 and a half to Matthews. So you're basically at 45 million towards four players, up to 45 million towards four players once Tavares and Marner sign their new deals. That's not that much different than what it currently is. You're basically at 40 million right now. So the cap's going to go up an extra 5 million for these guys as hopefully they do better in the playoffs, do more in the playoffs. 45 million towards four players is insane. Uh, but as I said, hopefully the cap in a few years gets to that 100 million mark or gets closer to that 100 million mark. And at the end of the day, hopefully the Leafs can just be smarter with the cap space. Just because you have a bunch of space into the offseason doesn't mean you should sign a John Klingberg. Doesn't mean you should sign these guys um, that are risks. Use your cap wisely. So I'll, I'll finish this video by just saying I'm happy Nylander staying long term. I hate the precedent and the culture that's been created with this team with guys just getting whatever they want. You get no moving clause? Sure. 
you get high cap hit. Sure. I understand the tax situation with Toronto. If you're in Florida and you're making nine and a half, you're basically making the same as a guy in Toronto making 11 and a half. I get that. I get all of that. At the end of the day, Nylander, along with the other guys, haven't even seen a conference final, haven't even seen more than five games in a second round. And a guy like David Pasternak, yeah, you know what? Money will keep being made. Like Pasternak signed for 11.25. Nylander's numbers have been similar in recent memory here. And we're more into the future. He gets an extra 250K. Again, my problem is David Pasternak has seen a conference final. He's seen a Stanley Cup final. <laughs> so there's also that. And Pasternak has been a much more consistent scorer. So give me your thoughts, guys. I know people are going to be disappointed in this contract, mad at this contract. Again, I really am against the precedent and the culture of these negotiations. But in terms of the precedent of not losing this guy for nothing, I mean, what would you want? You actually would want Nylander to walk for nothing? I think there's some people out there saying that. Do you actually believe that? The only thing that I'll add to that is, was there an opportunity to trade for an upgrade on defense and goaltending using Nylander as the main asset? Apparently for Elliot Freeman, there wasn't a good enough return for Nylander in the offseason, and they even checked after the Sweden trip to see if they could get someone in the offseason or make a trade, and Nylander at an eight-year term for $11.5 million was what they got. So it seems like they had no leverage. I, I don't know, guys. Honestly, I, I think it really should have been lower, but we're at, we're at where we're at, and uh, hopefully the Leafs can figure it out cap-wise. So give me your thoughts, guys. I'm all over the place. I, I'll probably make more videos just with more thoughts because I think when you look at the bigger cap picture and more trades and stuff like that, um, there's more to look at here than just the, the contract itself. But this is my reaction for now when it's officially official. Go check out my other videos when I talked about it. Uh, but this is as the Leafs have just posted, Nylander staying eight years, 11.5 million per. Talk soon.